okay i've started recording the audio i'll be free for about 1 hour after that i will have to go so uh, same okay this fine okay so from what i understood you wanted to discuss whether islam is true or not you did not want to discuss the existence of god right mm, yeah so um to preface that basically i think um the proofs for of the religion aren't really that good and there are good evidence against the religion so uh Okay, so my position in this regard is that the proofs for the truth of Islam at least are extremely strong and most of the contentions to Islam are basically garbage. Even if you look at the criteria atheists or agnostic use for their own beliefs such as for instance for evolution. So that would be my initial position in this regard. So do you want to make the first argument here against Islam or should I uh, make one of my own arguments for Islam? Well, okay. Um you can go ahead you can go ahead. Okay. so it's mostly going to be um so it, i think it's mostly going to be just um miracles essentially miracles prophecies but yeah go ahead yeah uh basically yeah but there there's a few other things as well so uh since you wanted to focus on historical accuracies and miracles right I'll just keep the focus on that because that is something I, mean, no, I found well, interesting. No, the focus, the focus is that there's no good proofs against it. There's no good proofs for it, and there are good proofs against it. So, the main thing you were talking the proof about. Proof, I just mean from, evidence. Okay. Uh, I think there are, and I think that it's self-evident okay, yeah. that they are. So I'll just start with my first argument for the truth of Islam. So. Okay. The first argument for the truth of Islam, or first proof for the truth of Islam, is the numerous historical accuracies in the Quran that are not found in biblical text. Almost all of them are not found in any pre-Islamic text. I'll just get, get us started with one example. It's about the title of Pharaoh. So, if you look at Bible or pre-Islamic texts, other pre-Islamic texts, all of them mention the title Pharaoh for the ruler of Egypt in the time of Prophet Yusuf al Islam, Prophet Ibrahim al Islam, and Prophet Musa al Islam. This is historically inaccurate. Quran only mentions the title of Pharaoh in the time of Prophet uh, Musa al-Islam. This is something that we know is historically accurate and there are numerous references for this. So if the Quran was plagiarizing from biblical or pre-Islamic texts, it would have the same mistakes of pre-Islamic texts. The fact that it doesn't and the fact that it has extra accurate historical information is best explained by Quran being a, a revelation from a, a supernatural source of knowledge. Uh, give me one moment after that you can respond. One second, stop Corona. Uh, okay, you can respond. Yeah. So um, so the proof is that um, the, uh, the book use the book basically uses the correct title for Pharaoh during the time of uh, Joseph, and the Bible and um, you know the, the old testament doesn't pre-islamic so texts all pre-islamic texts yeah yeah so all pre-islamic texts do not use that do not have that thing in there right so to this i mean i am i'm uncertain if um so i mean as a, as a, as someone that so someone that doesn't believe in in the religion you know, he's gonna say um the use of uh doesn't exist right so uh, how do you respond to that then uh, I'm sorry. Can you repeat what you said? So yeah, some so someone that doesn't believe in the religion, he's gonna say, well, Yusuf doesn't exist. Uh, Yusuf, well, not doesn't exist. I'm unsure about the existence of some person named Yusuf, um, and um, so yeah, essentially he's gonna deny existence of the uh, prophet. And since that miracle uh, uh, hinges upon a prophet, and it becomes the title of the hero is in. In question and during the time of Yusuf, right? So he's going to deny that Yusuf ever existed or he's going to say, I don't know if he exists. So how do you respond to that? Then? Okay, uh, there's a simple response. I mean, you can. Uh, I mean, yeah, go ahead. There's a simple response to this. Firstly, there's two things to consider. Uh, if the person is claiming, the person who is responding is claiming that Yusuf definitely did not exist or that yeah, it's yeah. just possible he existed, it's pro uh, possible he did not exist. Because if someone is claiming he definitely did not exist, 
then you would have to give some burden of, you have some burden of proof to show he did not exist if you are just claiming it's possible he did not exist uh, then i don't think you have much burden of proof but in that case uh, the argument is not refuted here's a simple reason for this whether you believe yusuf al islam existed or uh, you are unsure about it the quran is still talking about a specific person in a historical time period the historical scholars the historians biblical scholars who have researched this topic if yusuf al islam existed he existed in a specific time period so you can still refer to that time period and make a mistake regarding the historical title of pharaoh uh, yusuf uh, musa al islam if he existed if it's possible he existed he still exists in a specific time people time period and you could make a mistake or you could say something accurate about the title of ruler of egypt in that time period so quran is still historically accurate because it when it's speaking about a particular time period it does not make the same mistake that pre islamic texts make and it's not just okay, a so mention I mean, let, let me just finish this point and then you can respond mm-hmm. uh, this is not just a matter of title of pharaoh this is a, the simple fact that this is historical information that could the quran or author of the quran could not have known if he was copying from pre islamic texts and this is not just the only example there are many others but there is a pattern here of numerous cases like this uh, you can respond okay so if someone doesn't believe in yusuf and he doesn't believe that he existed he's going to say well you know we have no way to verify this and 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 then he could say well you know it could be just an uh, you know it, it could be just um, you know the prophet just coming up with it now again um if history now you mentioned historians do agree that yusuf existed um now that could be an undercut to, to them but um so it, it would say something like um yeah it would kind of so if you say that yusuf so historians let's just assume that they agree that some person yusuf existed and then um he was under the rulership of you know he was alive during the time of this ruler and um also the timing has to be in, uh, interesting right so um from what i understand the pharaoh thing uh, is that uh, they were referred to as kings from one period uh, and then after that it became pharaoh right okay just to clarify yeah. one thing i never yeah. said um, that uh, all historians say or historians agree that yusuf al islam existed i said something else okay i said okay. yeah yeah so i'm going off of that right yeah i said that if he going existed, off of the assumption that they do agree no uh there is no consensus regarding this as far as i'm aware what i said was they agree that if he existed he existed in a specific time period and in that time period the title of pharaoh was not used this was not known at the time of the, prophet yeah. muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so they say that and it is not in okay, so uh, they say that, text hmm. uh, okay, okay so they question. say that if he yeah sorry i'm cutting you off there Yes, you can ask a question. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so I'm going. So, if if they're agnostic about this person, okay. So you're saying that well, even if you're agnostic, then you have to concede that if you, uh, because the historians say that uh, if he exists during some time period, uh, then then uh, and, and during that time period, the title pharaoh was not used. Um, well, then uh, because of that thing, um, uh, the book seems to be getting that right right and because of that fact um uh the one explain one good explanation is that um it was from some something supernatural um, the prophet got this source from the supernatural who, who would have known that this thing uh, was uh, such and such right yes the reason for this is is that the uh, natural sources at the time they don't have this knowledge and yeah, fair and so just to address one more point it. real time just let me just one more point you can try to claim that this is as a result of chance but the problem with the chance hypothesis is that when there are so many cases like they are in case of egyptian history babylonian history like all the prophecies that are in the hadith the more cases they are the less likely the chance hypothesis becomes and when there are so many cases as they are in wait, the wait, case wait. of quran and hadith the chance hypothesis is just irrational you can respond so the chance hypothesis is that he came up with it and he, and he just stuck with it right so that's the hypothesis so um you're saying well if he just he, if he's using the same title over and over again that means he actually believed that this was the title no actually i'm not saying that i'm saying 
that in case of the specific title uh, firstly it's not due to just uh, it's not a random thing from the text because here is the important point to remember the bible uses both title king and pharaoh when it's talking about prophet yusuf okay, okay, yeah. let me just finish this point the bible also uses both title king and pharaoh when it's talking about prophet musa -Islam. the quran makes a distinction here the title pharaoh is never used in the time of uh, prophet yusuf -Islam. And that uh, uh, Pharaoh is never used in the type of Prophet Yusuf al-Islam and the title King is never used in the time of Prophet Musa al-Islam. So there is a clear cut distinction here. The chance hypothesis is not just based on this thing. The chance hypothesis or the problem with it is that there are so many cases of historical accuracies and prophecies that it's irrational to claim all of these are by chance. Okay, so so the uh, okay, so uh, now you okay, so uh, from what I understood was that um, the chance was only with this. So, um, okay, so you're saying that because the because there are other uh, prophecies, other things that are historically accurate, therefore, um, it isn't the case that um, so this was actually intentional, it wasn't um, actually unintentional, and um, yeah, so that's what you're saying, right. And this is best explain, explained by a supernatural source. Yes. Okay, so, um, so I mean, what, what do you think about the argument that um, naturalist explanations are going to be inherently superior because uh, the prior probability of some super, supernatural thing happening is um, extremely, extremely low? Uh, here's the problem with that claim. Those are uh, based on uh, basically atheistic or uh, secular assumptions regarding naturalism being true or more probable and there are massive problems for with that for multiple reasons. For instance, now this is a, now this discussion is going into the basically supernatural versus natural. Does God exist or not or if God exists, he interferes in the world okay. or not. Okay, okay. But, so no, atheism is just the proposition that God is not. No, there are no gods, right? So I don't think how, that has anything to do with naturalism because you can uh, uh, believe in atheism and still believe in some supernatural thing. So um, I don't. I don't really understand that. Uh, I agree that you can believe in atheism and still believe in something supernatural, but the yeah. assumption that supernatural knowledge does not interfere in the world, right? Or that is a part of naturalism. Yeah. Like they will believe that all causes or explanations are natural explanations or that there is no supernatural explanation. That is part and parcel of naturalism. So that okay, assumption but, but is But you there. do agree that uh, because of the prior probability that the supernatural has never been observed, uh, and, you know, especially since, um, you know, so I, you, you could play some games here. You could say something like, well, since the cameras have been invented, since, uh, you know, we've learned uh, about how to, uh, you know, more, more technology has been invented to capture information. We haven't really seen any intervention of the supernatural. Therefore, the prior probability of the supernatural existence seems to be very low. And then the, now you could have, uh, you could play that thing here and you could say, well, it, it's either by chance um, that these things occurred uh, or, you know, and with history, it's, it's more like, um, so in history, uh, some sources, go out of existence or um, some sources are corrupted and whatnot. So that could change the information. So uh, Now, the naturalist could say, well, you know, these things could have happened and therefore the probability that the naturalist explanation is, uh, is superior is given because, um, you know, with history, we can't really test, right? Because you, I hope I'm making sense here, right? So with history, you can't really go ahead and test those things and they, they could be some extinct sources and then, uh, you, you have no way of assessing uh, it anymore uh, that, that, you know an extinct source uh, I think I understood that, most of what uh, you said you know guide you to a more naturalist explanation yeah so I think I under understood hmm? most of what you said and I'll try yeah, to respond to it now so uh, the mm -hmm. fundamental problem with this assumption is that uh, since the cameras were invented there are no supernatural uh, interventions that we can see so therefore they are unlikely. I don't think this claim works for a very simple reason. Suppose on my view on the Islamic worldview, for instance, the cameras were not invented in the 1800s. They were uh, invented in 800s, for instance. Uh, it is still unlikely that you would see supernatural intervention in many cases. For instance, just to give one example in this regard, 
uh, even if cameras were uh, invented in the time of Prophet Muhammad for instance right I don't think we would see the supernatural intervention directly or the uh, the uh, receiving of re revelation directly because it's not something that can be seen with the naked eye so I don't think this claim yeah, works I don't think okay, uh, naturalism so, gets any you, bonus points were, uh, uh, let me just finish this point real time after that you yeah, can respond yeah. so I think that's the first problem with the uh, camera thing the second problem with it is that uh, the assumption that in our experience that we don't see miracles therefore they are unlikely has a bigger problem the problem is whose experience because miracles have been reported throughout history supernatural events have been reported throughout history uh, why aren't we taking all their ex uh, uh, experience you can say that I am not explaining the fact that why these are not being seen right now or that I am coming with ad hoc explanations for that but the problem with this is all of that is based on your intuitions there are two problems with this first problem is that all of that is based on your intuitions regarding how things should happen or would happen and the problem is our intuitions evidence because most atheists will reject or agnostics for that matter will reject intuitions as evidence when it comes to existence of God the strong PSR premises of the Kalam numerous other things life being designed they will reject intuition so you cannot have your cake and eat it using intuitions as evidence and rejecting them as evidence that that's the first problem in this regard the uh, actually I don't uh, remember exactly the second problem if it comes to mind I'll repeat it uh, later but uh, you can respond to what I've said till now okay so so you said first off that even if you had cameras and whatnot uh, under your view uh, you still wouldn't have seen those uh, miracles and whatnot no, not all miracles, just this specific point. Supernatural things happening. But I mean, I, I don't uh, agree Real time, just let me clarify one thing. Point, just let me clarify one thing. Hmm. I'm not saying if we had cameras, you wouldn't see all supernatural miracles. I'm saying if we had cameras, hmm. we still wouldn't see the revelation coming to Prophet Muhammad wasallam because it does not come based on the naked eye. Like, you can't see it from the naked eye, even on the Islamic okay. perspective. Okay, so the argument is that um, you can't really assess if this was supernatural or wasn't supernatural, right? I mean, uh, okay, so you can't really assess it, therefore, um, okay, wait, wait, wait. so you're saying um, you can't really assess that this was actually supernatural, right? So, no, so I'm the not argument saying that. Again, from the supernatural thing doesn't work. No, I'm not saying we cannot assess whether it's supernatural or not. I'm saying the specific point regarding camera. Uh, assessing whether uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is receiving revelation or not like humans at that time could not see angels with their naked eye according to the Islamic position so while you could observe some miracles you could not observe uh, this particular thing whether the Quran is a revelation or not a revelation based okay, on the okay. camera because it could not be seen from naked eye even in principle and actually I just remember the second point and I can uh, make it then you can respond to both of these the second point I was making that is that in almost all of atheist arguments and beliefs such as evolution because it's a uh, thing atheists strongly believe in they have to always come up with ad hoc explanations so the problem for the it and I can give examples if you want you cannot have your cake and eat it either ad hoc explanations are reliable or they are not if they are not almost all of the arguments for evolution collapse if they are then you don't have an argument here so this was my second point that I intended to make you can respond yeah okay so um for, so for the first point was uh, you saying that even if you had cameras you couldn't really observe the revelation coming down but you know my point was much more general than that my point was that well you know uh, there are supernatural things that we are supposed to be able to see but we don't really see them and um uh, and because you know uh, my thing with the cameras was that it wasn't just cameras it was just instruments and whatnot that we have made you know so I guess the large hydron colliders and cam cameras are like that but any instrument that you know receives data or something like that of the world we, we haven't we, we have had an explosion of those uh, equipment so for example your phone has cameras everyone has cameras now and then we have better equipments now uh, to to really 
Um, who, I mean, I, I'm not an engineer by any means, or physicist, so I can't really give you explanations, uh, you know, specific examples of this, but, you know, telescopes and all these things. And um, I, I mean, you can understand what I'm going for here, but I mean, yes. I'm saying despite the existence of, that, of those things and us having and gathering more and more data, we haven't really um, been able to observe anything supernatural. And therefore, that kind of reduces the probability of the supernatural existing. And, and then... Um, your second point was that okay. So what if what about everyone else that has had supernatural experiences? Well, then um, to that, I mean, I would say, well, I mean, I'm I'm just um, so so I mean, okay. But you also talked against evolution here. So um, I was going to go for a. Um, well, I mean, I could just say that they were mistaken. But yeah, that that is uh, that is problematic. But it, it's not just that they were mistaken, um, but that they can't really. Uh, come up and prove that those things happened. It's just that, well, you know, um, this one time uh, I saw the sun um, what, moving, you know, the miracle at bottom. Then, but, but, you know, the, the actual, um, you know, when, when you give them prizes for the evidence of the paranormal, you don't really, you don't really get them coming here. Now you could say, well, you know, uh, it's not, uh, it's not that the, the methods they're using, you can't really assist the supernatural using those methods. But yes, um, uh, the thing with that is that um, you can actually use that. And, and if we can, uh, if we can get to a naturalist, naturalist explanation for their things, well, then it's not supernatural. And, and the naturalist explanation um, is, um, is going to be superior because of the prior probability of the supernatural's non-existence. Okay. Or uh, non-observant. I mean, okay, let me finish on. So, another, and then, uh, so you have given them these prizes and then, uh, and so, so even with the scientific method, the best we could say is that, well, we can't really say what, where this comes from. And then your second point was that evolution is an ad hoc explanation, right? But, no. I mean, I, I don't, I don't really see, so no, evolution is an uh, so within evolution within theism and atheism debates, uh, atheist there's evolution, but and evolution, um, I guess I, I guess you want to say uh, they they use ad hoc explanations for supporting evolution, and therefore, um, you know, therefore they, they can't really um, come against engine because of ad, because they use ad hoc explanations. Okay, you uh, can go ahead now. There are multiple problems with what you said and I'll, I'll try to address each of them. Firstly, in the case of pro prior probability, right? I don't think there is any prior probability against miracles or supernatural events. The reason for this is that most of your arguments here are, uh, again, it's based on who, whose observation because you are only taking uh, into collection our observations. You are not taking collect into collection observations of people throughout history. So I think that's first issue with it. The second issue with all of this is that you are assuming that if miracles were possible or if miracles did happen, they would happen all the time. This is a baseless assumption based on your subjective intuitions. And again, here there's another question here, are intuitions evidence or not? If they are not, your argument uh, collapses. Thirdly, here's the important thing to keep in mind. According to the Islamic position, Miracles, if they happen, they primarily happen with prophets. If there is no prophet at this time, or if there is no pro uh, prophet at a time the camera is invented, they would not happen primarily, according to the Islamic position. So you saying that uh, lack of miracles is evidence against miracles being possible does not make sense. Because even on the Islamic position, there would be a general lack of or a massive lack of miracles in this time period so these are uh, three problems there's an other issue here uh, many uh, atheists or secularists will try to say uh, the responses given to lack of apparent miracles are ad hoc explanations right they are invented after the fact to justify a problem i don't think this is the case for the reasons i mentioned but here's why i brought up evolution into this i didn't say evolution was uh, an ad hoc explanation i said that evolutionists or people who believe in uh, evolution have to use ad hoc explanations all the time let me just give one example of this and you can look this up uh, just one moment chup karo do minute let me just give one example of this 
One of the most common arguments for evolution is biogeography. What this means is animals specifically show up where and when evolutions, evolutionists predict them to show up. There is a very popular problem with this claim. It's uh, the rafting hypothesis. What this means is, is that in numerous cases that animals when they don't show up where evolutionists pred predict them to show up, evolutionists will claim that these animals basically floated on rafts and crossed oceans. This is an ad hoc and unlikely explanation and even they recognize it's an ad hoc and unlikely explanation. And I can give a reference if you want. The fact is, this is something invented after the fact to explain a problem for evolution. This is an ad hoc explanation that evolutionists have to rely on constantly. Here's my question for you. Or are ad hoc explanations reliable or not? If they are not, evolution faces a problem in biogeography and numerous other cases. If they are reliable, then your argument against miracles fails even in principle. You can respond. Okay. Okay, yeah, I mean, so with the ad hoc explanation, if, if that is indeed uh, ad hoc, so if, if I assume that the drafting hypothesis is ad hoc, I, I'll just grant you that it is ad hoc. And I'm just going to say, well, there's no evidence uh, uh, for the drafting hypothesis, or rather the evidence that the drafting or the rafting or code or whatever it says is rather low. And um, I, I don't think um, we are really committed to, um, I, okay, so I mean, you're bringing up atheist and theism, but I mean, I don't, I don't see the relevance of that here. Um, I mean, we are talking about um, proofs of Islam being not, not so good and then proofs, of, uh, proofs against it being good. Um, so uh, we are starting off with the proofs of Islam, right? So uh, this is why we are talking about miracles. And so um, your point was that miracles, uh, so I, I'm actually uh, uh, operating under the assumption that miracles would happen. And you're operating under the miracle, on the assumption that, uh, or yeah, you're operating under the assumption that uh, miracles would maybe it doesn't happen, that that's not the case, that miracles happen all the time. And because, um, and, and your your religion also says that if miracles happen, it's from God. So, I mean, okay, so with this, so, I mean, I, I don't think, so what, what is, okay, so miracles, um, so if we define that as, um, so do, do you believe, that, so first question here is that, do you believe some supernatural entity like some jinn or, or the shaitan or, or something else other than from God and come in and do miracles or, you know, or something that looks exactly like miracles, except that it's miracles by virtue of it not being from God. Do you, do you think that this is actually possible? And um, if you could just say yes or no, I mean, I, we can move on or uh, I could move on to. What uh, in principle, yeah. so you since said, doing some sort of supernatural things is possible. But uh, after you finish mm -hmm. your point, of course, I would have to give a more detailed response to this. But uh, in principle, jinns mm -hmm. doing a supernatural thing is possible. Okay, and yeah, okay. So, and, and oh wait, supernatural, do you think that it's possible for jinns to do something that looks exactly like miracles, except that it's not actually miracle by virtue of not being from God? Uh, yeah, it's something. Jinns okay. can do something that looks like a miracle, but again, after you finish your point, I would have to give a more detailed response to this. Okay, okay. So, and, and we also talked about what miracles would happen all the time. I mean, okay, fair enough. So, with this, uh, we can say that well, we can't really give because under this, these assumptions. Okay, so um, miracles would happen all the. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, I mean, we are operating under that hypothesis, but, you know, um, I guess, I guess I would say that we have no reason to believe that, um, I guess, yeah, we don't, we have very little reason to believe that. Okay, well, yeah. So you, you would say that, you yeah, know, okay. So you would respond to that by saying, um, well, no, it's, it isn't the case. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. Yeah. I'm willing to grant that, um, the supernatural prior probability is, is, um, is, uh, it's not that great because so no um okay so i'm willing to grant that uh, at the very least the prior probability so by, by prior probability what we mean what we mean is that um the whatever we have seen from the world basically uh, is is that um it isn't the case that miracles occur therefore the likelihood that this thing was mir miraculous is is lowered essentially that's the thing and and maybe i i don't think and and you are trying to say that well um 
uh, you can talk about prior probability of the past, right? Uh, but you can go ahead with the with the question. Yeah, I, I was rambling on. Uh, there are multiple things. I think the problem with prior probability are uh, twofold. Uh, like I mentioned that your assumption is they would be happening on the time and I simply don't agree with that. And the fact of uh, the use of intuitions in this regard, like uh, I do find that problematic as well. Just to address one thing you said earlier regarding me using evolution uh, to argue here. Here's a simple reason why I'm using evolution. This is something that many secularist evolutionists, uh, agnostics and atheists do believe. This is one of their own beliefs. So if you are, uh, for instance, if they are using a double standard here, I can point that out. If they are using one criteria for their own beliefs and another criteria for miracles or beliefs of others, I think I, I'm justified in pointing that out. That was my main reason for using that. Now, uh, I'm sorry, I did not get your last point in this regard. Uh, yeah, so... um. I mean, what was it talking about? Yeah, the prior probability thing, right? Yeah, uh, you can you just summarize your point and then I can respond it and then maybe we can get it to a few more arguments. Okay, yeah, sure. So the prior probability of the uh, miracles is that... Be, oh, wait, so you're saying that basically the prior probability is not admissible in case of history, right? Because um, just because we haven't seen it now doesn't mean it couldn't have occurred back then. But the but the claim of prior probability is that we haven't seen it now. So the probability of that is essentially that it's, it's going to be low, right? Uh, and and you're saying that prior probability is not admissible for history because because we don't know what happened then. I'm not saying that it's not admissible for history in general. I'm saying there are two problems with this. First problem is are intuitions evidence or not because if uh, the atheists or agnostics will reject them as evidence in numerous cases and then try to use them when they feel like it. I think that's inconsistent and I don't think that's works. that works. Second thing I wanted to mention is that this uh, the argument from prior probability is based on the assumption that they happen all the time or they would happen all the time. I don't think this explanation works. The third thing that's relevant to the topic of prior probability uh, is that in many cases, evolutionists or atheists or agnostics will believe things that we cannot see right now or happen right now as being plausible or rational. This will be the case for numerous cases in evolution. I can give other examples as well. For instance, uh, early mutations occurring and uh, causing changes in living things. Uh, this is one example. Many atheists will try to argue uh, that something can come from nothing or that there, there is an infinite multiverse. The, we don't have evidence for any of these things. We cannot even have evidence of any of these things. And I can give references in this regard if you want. Uh, so my main problem here is inconsistency. You cannot in say in that in our experience are, uh, or Occam's razor, basically the simplest explanation of reality. That is a problem for miracles unless you admit that it is a problem for for numerous cases in terms of evolution and uh, etc. And, and atheism in general. That's my main problem with this. There's a second issue in this regard. There is nothing counterintuitive in general about miracles or su supernatural events occurring. They have occurred throughout history and most people in history have believed them. So there is nothing counterintuitive about this. You can say intuitions are not evidence and I can't, I can't prove or disprove intuitions are evidence or not but that is an in principle position that can be taken whether intuitions are evidence or not. But the problem with your claim would be or of the most atheists in general is that almost all of your arguments depend on intuitions. For instance, the problem of evil, just to give one example, from start to finish, yeah. is based oh on God. intuitions. Yeah. Uh, and this is one thing, uh, like, I would like to point out, this is one problem. Uh, but you can respond, like, this is my main issue in this regard. These are my main problems with the uh, position on miracles, but you can respond. Yeah, so, so you mentioned intuitions, right? So you mentioned that uh, atheists are using intuitions when they're saying that, well, miracles have happened in the past, so they should also happen right now. But you know, I don't think that's actually, um, that's actually a, a sort of justified opinion because over history, like you mentioned, over history, we have seen, uh, you know, claims of miracles happening. Um, and then all of a sudden, 
whenever we have developed this technology uh, to to look at the world suddenly they're not there so what's up with that now now and and then and then i mean i, I don't really know the historical arguments that well um, historians uh, have arguments against those things happening uh, and then uh, you're also saying that well you, I, I don't know why you're bringing atheism into this i don't think atheism is relevant to this because um the, the question is on the proof of islam being uh, inadequate and the proof against islam being uh, being but uh, in in lowering the probability of islam and vice versa so, so that's the um, our, uh, that's the thing that we want to discuss on, right? And then, uh, yeah. So basically, my uh, so the sum, summarize the intuition thing is that. Um, well, I, and by the way, I mean when when someone says that, so there's two sides here. So one side is that one one thing one group believes that the religion is true, and the other group believes that the religion is not true. Now, just because someone believes that the religion is not true, it doesn't mean that. Uh, they are necessarily committed to denying the supernatural or God or any of those things. They they can believe in whatever. But, you know, I would, I would, uh, if I was them, I would probably use something like a, a naturalist explanations and whatnot. But but even then, uh, even if I just assume that the supernatural exists, um, I, I mean, I, I don't, I don't think, I don't see anything. There, right? Okay, so um, so for, so let me summarize the things I want to say here. So first of all, I don't think the intuitions are unjustified because over history we have seen that miracles have occurred, and you've uh, alluded to such. And then suddenly, when we have the technology to observe the world better, we don't see them anymore. So what's up with that? Um, that's really fishy. Oh, and then secondly, is that um, atheism theism is not relevant. We should stick to Islam and rules uh, for Islam being inadequate, and then. And so on and so forth, whatever I said there. And then thirdly is that um, you will, yeah, I go, yeah, that's basically what I want to say. I, I I forgot the third point, but I mentioned it later. Okay, uh, so I think I have addressed the point about that uh, the intuition that uh, if Intuitions. miracles were happening, they would be happening all the time. And I don't want to uh, get yeah, into so that again. Let me just finish this point. Uh, I don't want to get into the point about atheism and theism again, but I'll just bring it one, one more time. I'll just summarize in a line, uh, in a line or two. The reason I'm saying this is because I'm doing an inter internal critique of your beliefs. You believe this thing. You believe evolution. Most atheists or agnostics believe problem of evil is a good argument. The thing is, you cannot use intuitions uh, and uh, certain versions of Occam's razor when you feel like it and discard them when you don't feel like this. Moreover, you cannot appeal to ad hoc explanations when you feel like it and discard them when you don't feel like this. Uh, so that's my main issue with the argument uh, regarding miracles or the prior probability thing. I think we have discussed this enough. Now, if you okay. want, you okay. can yeah. bring up your first argument against Islam and we can discuss okay. that and then we can move on to uh, like other topics related okay, to this. So, um, so, so with miracles, I've talked a lot, but I'm willing to grant that Miracles can happen, and the supernatural exists. Okay, so let's let's grant that um, as as an as an agnostic interlocutor, someone says, um, "Well, the supernatural can happen." And then I say, "Well, the supernatural can happen," and then uh, the competing hypothesis between um, you know the prophet being a um, you know some sort of supernatural creature that came to uh, deceive people is greater than uh, is not um, removed by the. Islamic sources, right, or rather the Islamic theorists, that the theorists that believe Islam is true, they haven't that that theory hasn't been removed, and um, because of that, uh, it, it's we are unjustified in really believing um, this um, Islam is true hypothesis. Further, um, uh, the, the religion has several problems. So you've been alluding to it uh, that you don't believe in evolution, but I think evolution is a good counter argument here. Um, so. I, I don't think evolution necessarily means that. Um, yeah, necessarily, it doesn't mean that the religion is false. And then, um, so, so the evolution is one good example. And then there is the problem of embryology within the uh, religion, which is that the thing the semen makes and then they turn into halaqa and so on and so forth and then there's also the timing issue with this uh, thing because the semen it becomes a semen for a time period and then uh, so, so these things these scientific errors 
Yeah, like, oh yeah, sure. But but you, want, you know, my point is that real time. Yeah. If you want, we can. Okay, start if I with, had to summarize, just pick one yeah, so topic. So if I had to summarize, uh, so if I had to summarize these things, I'd just say that there are scientific inconsistencies which um, lower the hypothesis that. Uh, the theory that the, the the religion is true, and therefore we are kind of in a pickle. We kind of justified in 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 disbelief for someone that believes that evidence should guide guide religion. Okay, uh, I'll try to yes, uh, respond to both the point about evolution and the point about uh, embryology. Okay. So no, my point. Yeah. So my one. So one point was that. Uh, the supernatural may have caused it, so it wasn't a real prophet. And the second one is that um, some uh, what the scientific in, inconsistency. Uh, real can, time. You can choose real time. You can start with. Uh, we can pick. Uh, you can pick one of the uh, topics you want to discuss. Either the gin thing that gins caused it, for instance, or evolution or embryology. Pick one, and we can start. Um. Okay. So, um. I guess. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, I mean, okay. So you want me to pick one and then, um, yeah. I mean, okay. So I should pick one and then just elaborate on that. No, I listened to you. Uh, like you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Point, then let me respond. Just pick Let's one. Go with evolution. Okay. So here's the basic theory regarding evolution. All scientists have proven in this regard is that physical processes are responsible for certain things, and can explain at least some, if not all, facets of life. This is something I also agree with. The disagreement is on two things. One, that these processes are blind and unguided. I think this is a baseless assumption from the scientists. And the other thing that the primary disagreement is regarding human evolution. Here is the problem with all of the so-called arguments regarding human evolution. They are all based on the assumption that similarities between humans and chimps show common ancestry. And I think this is a nonsensical claim. In fact, uh, just to highlight one problem in this regard, there are numerous cases of similarities among living things that are not due to common descent. It's called convergent evolution. That's one thing. But there's another assumption that I want to address. The assumption from scientists and evolutionists in general is that if God was creating humans independently or separately, he would have created them unlike any other creature or animal, unlike apes, unlike lions, unlike rabbits etc etc i think this is a baseless assumption think about it conceivably there are three options if god is creating some uh, new form of life either he could create them uh, similar to what exists different or uh, entirely different to what exists and somewhat similar or somewhat different to what exists already there is no sp uh, special reason why god would pick one of these over another why can't god create uh, a human that looks similar to an ape or a chimp. I mean think about it. The environment is already adapted to chimps or apes, right? So why can't God create an animal similar to them? Because the assumption from scientists and evolutionists is that if God was creating humans uh, independently or separately, they would be different from all other animals. But this is just a subjective and baseless assumption. Like why should anyone take it seriously? Uh, you can respond. Yeah, so um, I mean, you, so you disagree that uh, evolution is blind and unguided. I, I think I'm willing to grant that. I don't think you uh, uh, this really uh, has a contention as well. The contention with evolution in religion is that uh, humans and chimp common ancestry is that um, humans, you know, did not come about. So evolution believes that humans did not come about by Adam, and you know, Adam is is supposed to be without parents and so on. So that's the issue, and the evolution says that we have far more evidence to believe that uh, uh, that isn't the case, and we have we share common ancestry with chimps uh, and other apes. So, so your your issue with that is that uh, God can create something, and then it's similar to um, uh, these uh, these animals. Now, the problem with that is that is completely ad hoc, and that is exactly what we would expect when we we see that someone is trying to reconcile something. Um, that it irreconcilable uh, with um, by trying to say that well these data uh, or you know so by data I mean the paleontological record um, uh, you know the the endogenous retroviruses and so on and so forth are best explained uh, so so evolution says that these are best explained if we have a common ancestry 
times. And, and then I, I think that you're trying to make an assumption that this is actually how God intended it. But uh, evolution is saying, well, no, that's not the case. And um, so that's going to be the, uh, the thing uh, that it's it's an ad hoc rationalization. If, we, if you can agree here, um, well, then I think we can move on to the other topic, which was the hard, you know, which was um, hard thinking. What, what else was we? Yeah, whatever, uh, whatever other scientific inconsistencies, uh, inconsistencies were. But uh, you would have to agree that ad hoc rationalization does indeed reduce the probability of um, you know, the, the, the religion being true. And because you also said that you believe, um, I, I'm just being consistent, I'm just making be consistent here. Uh, you said that um, you believe that evolution uses ad hoc explanations sometimes. So, you know, the, uh, you know, the grafting hypothesis and so forth. So that, in your view, reduces the probability that evolution is true, right? So, yeah, so that's basically what I want to say. Okay. I are... think that it's just ad hoc. Okay, let me respond to this point. Firstly, I did not say that drafting or ad hoc explanations reduce the probability that evolution is uh, true. Uh, the debate is being recorded and if you want, you can later watch it and see that I did not say this. I said there needs to be a consistent standard regarding whether ad hoc explanations are acceptable or not. You cannot use ad hoc explanations when you feel like it and discard them when you don't feel like it. Secondly, with regards to ad hoc explanations, if they are a problem, I can name ad hoc explanations for literally every argument that evolutionists put, for, evolutionists put forward. Fossil record, embryology, uh, phylogenetic tree, similarities in living things. There are numerous ad hoc explanations that evolutionists have to use. This is not just one or two. So if ad hoc explanations are problematic, then evolution is basically dead. That's just a fact. Thirdly, here's the thing about uh, retro, uh, enteroviruses and all of other things. All of those arguments are based on the assumption that similarities are due to common descent. They are assuming this. There are similarities there and therefore common descent. And this is a nonsensical argument. In fact, Here's something I will do. I will show that common design is a better explanation for uh, similarities in living things than common descent. And I'll do that based on the criteria that atheists themselves use. Here is the basic outline case for evolution. Uh, physical processes can at least explain some things regarding history of life. Therefore, the simplest explanation is that all uh, that life is entirely due to physical processes, blind physical processes, and that anyone using uh, involving invoking an extra explanation such as intelligent design has burden of proof. This is the basic outline case for evolution. Here's the problem with this. According to evolutionists themselves, there are a massive amount of similarities in living things that are due to common descent and there are an absolutely massive amount of similarities in living things that are not due to common descent. If you use evolution as an explanation for one set of these similarities, you would have to invoke a secondary explanation or multiple secondary explanations for the similarities that are not due to common descent. Common design is a simpler explanation uh, than common descent of all these similarities because it can explain, explain both sets of similarities. The similarities that according to evolutionists are due to common descent and the similarities that according to evolutionists are not due to common descent. So based on the criteria that evolutionists or atheists themselves use, common design is by default a better explanation than common descent. So the argument from similarity basically fails based on the same criteria that evolutionists themselves use. This is the main argument you have. In fact, I will venture as far as to say this is the only argument you have regarding universal common ancestry or human chimp common ancestry. You can respond to this and then we can move on to embryology. Okay, yeah, sure. So, um, um, so with this, um, you're saying that, well, the mech so evolution, um, is, is ad hoc because of a common, there's there's an assumption that things have common ancestry and forth, right? If I'm understanding you correctly. Uh, I do not say right here ad hoc. I think this is an ad hoc explanation, but I did not make that argument. I said mm -hmm. that common design for the similarities in living things is a better explanation than common descent based on Occam's razor or the version of Occam's razor that atheists and evolutionists are themselves using. So, Okay, so um, I would say that, well, 
you know, you would have to have some, uh, so the naturalist explanation is that the universe is just the way it is. And then uh, the, the explanation for theism is that, well, uh, theism adds on top of that by saying, well, you know, here's a God and this God created us. But you're doing much more than that. Even if I said, well, here's a God, he created us. You're saying, well, here's a God, he created the world, he created um, human and so on and so forth. And he created them in a particular uh, pattern so as to, uh, you know, so as to make us, so as, you know, basically we started believing that this is from uh, common design, common descent and so on and so forth. Um, and, and that's, that's, I think, much more, um, uh, you know, problematic, much more uh, problematic compared Can to I the ask, alternative, which is that uh, real time? because we see the mechanisms for, yeah. Can you give us specific reason why it's problematic? Like, why common design you know, is adding, a problematic explanation? Yeah, because it, it involves um, God. And uh, so, you know, you're basically saying that um, God did all of this. And, and not only you're saying that God did all of this, he did it in a particular manner. And, and then that, that's just fine-tuning your theory. So it's just... Say, so, yeah, God, God is capable of, and then he did this. Right? And that's what you're doing. But he's capable of more things. Uh, he can, he's capable of not doing this and then uh, creating us differently. So how do you account for that, right? So that's another thing. Um, and also, I mean, so, so with evolution, there are um, mechanisms. I think you would agree th in those mechanisms. Yes. So natural selection and then all the genome thingies, right? I, I don't really have a good explanation for those things. I take it upon authority for the most part. Then, um, so that that's also... Uh, so, so I think you would agree that at the very least, in in what it is, or in what theists or you know evolution deniers they tend to do is that they tend to say, well, I believe in microevolution. We have seen it, um, but my macroevolution is is not true. Um, so, so microevolution and macroevolution. Do you believe in microevolution? And secondly, I think that the uh, argument from uh, a common design is problematic because it's fine tuning your theory. You're saying, well, God is uh, God is creating this world, and then that's it. Now, now the, the problem with that is that, um, yeah, it's essentially fine tuning your theory, right? Because God created us in this particular manner, but God could have created us in all sorts of manners. So, um, I, I don't see the, uh, I don't really see the thingy there, right? So it seems okay. problematic to me there. I uh, think and, there are multiple and evolution. The mech and then evolution mechanisms is that micro uh, micro evolution. I'm going to say micro evolution will lead to macro evolution, and then ma macro evolution is just the difference between those two is just time, and because it's just time, if you accept micro evolution and you accept that this much amount of time has a good, um, you're going to see uh, species differentiation and so on and so forth. And those species differentiation you can map and then you can find the common ancestor. And there are methods of finding common ancestor that do not believe that you know, there is common uh, common thing so so with the so uh, real so time, Elliot Sober mentions this real yeah. time you are going into multiple topics let me just address the stuff you have said so far and then you can respond yeah, and sure. add what Elliot Sober said okay okay so, so I'll address the points you made so far firstly I agree that physical mechanisms such as natural selection, although they are and random mutation, then there are numerous other things as well. There are numerous mechanisms in this regard that are happening in the history of life. This is something uncontroversial. It's frankly, it's observable. However, it does not follow from this that those mechanisms or physical processes are blind or unguided. That's a baseless assumption, assumption of the evolutionist. Firstly, secondly, I am not making That's my argument. Let me just finish this point. The problem is that do you agree that it leads to macro evolution or species formation? I will get to it later. I will get to it later. I promise I'll address it. Just let me finish my second point okay. first. The second point is with regards to the similarities of living things and me saying that basically God would do it this way. My argument is not based on that God would create life in a particular manner or that uh, these similarities have to be due to God. That's not my argument. I am making an inference to the best explanation. Uh, and that is basically how almost all of the arguments for evolution are made and you can find references for this for instance in Rob Kojonon's book and I can link it he's up uh, from what I understand he's he's someone who believes in evolution and he's still recognizing that inference to the best explanation but is you're more... using inference to best explanation yes that do you agree that inference to a best explanation leads to evolution or I mean I don't get it 
let you, me, you think that their insurance why. is bad, right? Let me explain why. With regards to similarity, there are at least four possible explanations. Chance, physical necessity, common design or common descent. I am not saying this have to be the way God would design, li uh, design life. I am saying that these can be explained by an intelligent designer. Here is why I am saying common design is a better explanation than common descent. It's based on the same version of Occam's razor that evolutionists themselves use. The version that states that the simplest explanation is the one that can explain most of the data by itself without invoking extra explanations. This is my point from Occam's razor and why common design is better than common descent. Now let's get to the point about macro and micro evolution. I don't think those uh, distinctions are like uh, valid or they make sense because to be honest uh, just because and I think in a few cases species can uh, like one species can change into another but it does not follow that for instance classes orders phyla uh, of an or genuses of animals emerged due to common descent uh, you can try to argue based on a version of Occam's razor but uh, again I showed the problem with that before as well I think some changes some uh, physical processes and in fact in a very few cases of speciation can be explained by uh, evolution or evolutionary theory or physical processes I don't think all of them can be necessarily but the evidence shows at least some of them can be explained now uh, you can respond to what I've said so far and you can bring up Elliot Sober as well yeah so I, I mean you're going against uh, evolution by saying that evolution said processes are bad, uh, but I think that I don't. I'm I'm inclined to disagree with that because I think that it's much more sophisticated than what you mentioned, um, and uh, in that regard, I mean, uh, if it was so easy to dismantle the evolution uh, by by just saying, well, you know, this, this stuff is just an assumption, I think that's problematic, right? But Edgar Sober he mentioned it in his book that uh, just because uh, whales and dolphins. Uh, have a similar torpedo shape does not mean that they have not point. But just but now, if if they have um, some sort of vestigial uh, uh, organ or um, something that's uh, similar, well, now you can say, well, that that raises a probability that they're similar, and that's what evolution really tries to do. So, um, a, an analogy here is that um, uh, so if two people have shared their shared their uh, uh, have copied each other, well then, um, and if both of them made the same mistakes, now the probability that both of them are copying each other is very high. Um, and what, and the other explanation is that, no, they both came up with the same thing and they both are making the same mistakes. Now, I think you're going to argue that vestigial organs are not going to be, um, or, you know, some people say that vestigial organs don't necessarily mean that um, uh, they have no use or whatever, but, you know, that's not what evolution said. Evolution said just, you know, well, not evolution, but, you know, what the, what we observe is that they're not being used for the same purpose that they have been used for. And that's the thing there. So, for example, whales have a hip bone, but why do whales need a hip bone, right? So that's a, a, an example of it. Now, it may be useful in, in some capacity, but hip bones are, you know, generally speaking, they're used for different purposes right uh, compared to whatever purpose that whales are using uh, and that's what I from what I know and um, I think that uh, what you're trying to do is that well now that becomes much more it becomes much more simpler to say that when you look I mean uh, you look at endogenous retroviruses you look at uh, the paleontological record and you uh, go ahead and say well you know it seems that we have um, you know, endogenous retroviruses, especially the probability that uh, those viruses latched on to those specific um, uh, strands in specific places, and then those specific places matches exactly with chimps, uh, uh, is is a very high. The, the probability is very very low, uh, and that is that. And then from there, you could just say, well, you know, the simpler explanation is that. Uh, uh, they, they have they share common design no, they share common descent um, but you could even add God into it it doesn't really matter uh, someone could just say well you know God designed them to be uh, uh, to, to come from a sim sim uh, uh, a common ancestor uh, or you know God's intervention is not really relevant here but you know the, the point was um, okay, well, I mean you can go back uh, to this real now, time uh, to, to the religion can but you, you could go ahead yeah can you just start like uh, let uh, it's been one hour. I'll just respond to these points mm -hmm. like uh, 
and then you can have a final yeah. word in this regard and then I, I have to go after that after your final word I'll end the recording okay yeah sure sure okay so first thing I'm glad that you brought up Elliot Sober because I actually read his book recently for publishing my own book on evolution so that's uh, first thing secondly if you look at Elliot Sober's work he recognizes that the main argument regarding uh, uh, common ancestry is similarities of living things in fact in chapter 4 I think he called it modest Darwin if I'm not wrong so the main argument there is still similarity for living things thirdly all Elliot Sober is arguing that these similarities are unlike to be unlikely to be the case due to chance I agree that these similarities are unlikely to be due to chance but just because they are unlikely to be due to chance that does not mean they are due to common descent they can be also be due to common design or in fact they can even be due to physical necessity which is something uh, many evolutionists uh, nowadays argue with regards to convergent evolution. So I don't think your claim regarding this works. Thirdly, uh, with regards to vestigial organs, uh, there are multiple problems with this including uh, what I think that this uh, argument is basically a version of God of the Gaps but I don't want to get into it right now. I will get into it maybe if we have a future debate on this topic. I'll just summarize my main problem with the vestigial organs argument as this. Uh, the argument is that uh, the initial argument was that these things are functional, uh, functionless and therefore an intelligent designer would not create them. Firstly, all of this is based on intuitions regarding how designer would act or would not act. If intuitions are not evidence, then this argument is automatically debunked. Secondly, you, uh, the problem you have with vestigial organs is that uh, like a whale hip is used for, for instance, whale hip is now being used for reproduction. Why would that happen under design or if God designed them? Again, the fundamental problem with all of these things is that how do you know how God would design? All of that is based on intuition and if intuitions are not evidence, that is dead argument. Thirdly, uh, fourthly and lastly, and this is the biggest problem with all of the bad design arguments. They assume that God or an intelligent designer would act in only one way. This is a baseless assumption and there is a very simple reason for that. Even if you look at humans throughout history or humans currently involved in arts or designing or etc etc. There are numerous different ways human design things. This is just an observable fact and I don't think anyone in their right mind will disagree with this. If this is the case then the assumption that God would only act or design in one way is irrational. And if that's the case this argument is dead. So that's my main problem with vestigial organs argument uh, and in general the stuff regarding Elliot Sober was saying now you can have the last word on this just try to keep it uh, brief to a couple of minutes and then I'll end the recording and let you know when I end it okay okay well we've talked about possibilities a lot so God is uh, possibly able to create us in this manner that he has created us um, and uh... And the problem with this is that, well, I, I don't think thieves are being consistent when they talk about this, especially in this uh, uh, topic that we were discussing, which is the, uh, the truth of the religion, uh, and especially because, well, it is possible that God is able to lie. Well, it's not possible. God is able to lie, and therefore it's possible that um, whatever he sent down is a lie, or, you know, whatever we are seeing, we are seeing is completely lies, and he can lie in a manner so perfect that we will never be able to tell. And because that possibility exists, and... Um, because that possibility exists, and I, I don't think theists have a good answer to this, uh, and uh, that alone kind of uh, uses the, the thing that they say when, when they say, well, it's possible that God could have done this, just as he, he, he has done now. But uh, the thing evolution, uh, uh, with, with, uh, you know, Evolutionary biologists would say is that well, it's much more simpler to just say that uh, this wasn't from common uh, uh, design and rather common descent and, and these processes are what led to this uh, and that's what evolution evolutionary biologists want to say and that's you know we've had a good discussion um, I'm okay with having a good discussion uh, another other discussion on this topic again in the future if you're willing to do that um, but yeah I've enjoyed this it's been pretty nice. Um, yeah, so if you had any, uh, yeah, so I'm willing to go, come back again and that's all I wanted to say basically. Uh, real time, I am uh, free mm -hmm. only on Sundays. So yeah, I would be happy to do what? it and next time uh, we can like, uh, if you just want, we can just keep the focus next time on historical accuracies of the Quran or prophecies or evolution. Like 
you can pick up bunch of different topics i'll send you the uh, link to my channel i have a lot of content there and you okay. can check out and what you want to like i can i can give you the topics i want to discuss and then we can uh, sure. we can talk about them if you want to uh, yeah sure that's but that i'm only good. free on sundays so like we would have to have the discussion on sundays that that's okay with you because yeah that's fine that's fine okay then uh, i'm ending the audio recording now